So I've been here at um, Absolute Music for the day, just doing a little bit of a sneak preview. But uh, I guess to finish up, I just wanted to show you a quick way of just using Cubase to create a scratch track. So let's say you're stuck musically for a couple of ideas and um, maybe you've got a bit of writer's block or maybe you don't necessarily play an instrument or play the piano, but you want to actually come up with some backings that are going to work for you and be viable in terms of being able to sing or, or uh, get someone else to play over the top of. So let's have a look at what I've got going on here. So at the moment, I've just grabbed some patterns. So you can have a look at Groove Age and SE4 and some of the other videos, but you can see that now it comes with patterns. So I'll just, you can see, just grab some patterns and drag them out, uh, drag them down into my project window. So let's close that. The other thing that I have is just this Hellion Sonic, a very simple pad sound. Um, nothing too flash. Just move a few parameters there, but. Um, basically, I don't want to add too much color or get too over the top in terms of um, you know, finding my sounds because first of all, I want to start with some chords. Okay, so I'm going to add a chord track. This was new in Cubase 7. So let's drag the chord track to the top and I'm going to come over here on the left hand side. I've already talked a little bit about track versions. It's a massive new feature inside of Cubase. Uh, basically, any track or any combination of groups can have their own versions. Uh, so if you're recording live drums in a studio, uh, you can record one version, and then quickly change over to the next version, the next version, and swap in between them. But we're going we, we're gonna to look at how you can actually do that on a fairly simple basis. So I've got a um, chord track here. I've got a new version. So let's create a new version. I'm just, I've got two going on now. So now that I've got my chord track, I'm going to grab my pen. I'm going to say monitor. So whatever I add on chord track, I want to play through the Hellion Sonic, that really simple sound that I just opened up before. So let's take loop off or cycle off and let's put in four chords. That's all you need, right? Apparently, according to Bob Dylan. But let's now open up the first one. So I'm going to go to my editor. Now I've got this keyboard set up beside me. So I can play any chord that I want and Cubase will automatically tell me what that chord is. So it doesn't matter if you haven't studied the nuts and bolts of music theory. Basically, all you need to do is stick your fingers on the piano and play it. And if it sounds good to you, Cubase is going to tell you exactly what it is. Cubase will tell you what it is even if it doesn't sound good. Because uh, you can go from the, I guess, the simplest chords through to the uh, most complex chords. So we've got D minor. You say, yes, that's the chord I want to start with. It sounds nice. It's a nice minor chord. But what to do next? Well, if you've studied, maybe you know that you can go to one, four, five, or maybe you're always going to one, four, five, and you just want to come up with something that's just a little bit different. So you want to stretch yourself and maybe stretch your uh, harmonic or musical horizons a little bit. So we've got D minor. Going to the next one, you can see I'm going to come over to my chord assistant, and immediately we've got two options, G minor and an E. Now there's different options that we can have down the bottom here, different parameters and different types of cadences and, and chord progressions. Um, so if you want to hit all, then it's going to give you a few more options. And as we start clicking through here, you notice you start to get into Berkeley jazz mode and we've got loads and loads of fancy, colorful, different types of chords. Um, and of course, we can change the inversions and that sort of stuff. But let's stay simple. Simple songs are good. So we've got D minor, G minor. Let's try this. So. So if we don't like any of those, we can move through to the next one. So, and now maybe we'll want to go back to one. Okay, so that's one very simple chord progression. Let's hear how it sounds. So sorry, I didn't have my counter right at the start there, but you can see that we can go through and we can hear it. So chord track, I'm not playing these chords, chord track's playing them for me on the Hellion Sonic part. If I don't like the inversion, I can come across and click on one. I can change the voicings to a guitar voicing down to a basic version, uh, sorry, a basic uh, voicing, or I can take automatic voicings off and you can see now I can change the inversion. So there's loads of different options. Um, okay, so you can see we've created four chords. Maybe we think that's all right, but we want to start messing around and maybe, maybe find some other chord progressions. So now I'm just going to come straight up to track versions. I'm going to go back to my first one, grab my pen again, and very quickly, without even having to think about chords, 
I can click on it. Maybe we want to keep D minor as the main chord. Let's go across to Chord Assistant. Now find another chord progression. So now. So there's four chords that I would not normally come up with. So you can see how instantly, if you're, if you're feeling a little bit in a rut, I guess, well, not feeling in a rut, but you're feeling a little bit down in terms of your chord progressions, this is a great way to come through and now, and, and now start working with your chord progressions. The other thing we can now do, now that we've got those chords in there, is we can say MIDI functions, sorry, that's me. We can go down to project, chord track, chords to MIDI. Oh, I need to have that highlighted. Trust me, I'm a professional some days. Um, chords to MIDI, and then you can see we can open that up and there are the chords. So we can start editing those chords if we want. Another very nice feature is the ability to now open it up in the score window. Oh, that didn't look very good by the way, so maybe edit that bit. Let me just, yep. So take two of this section. The other thing we can now do is open that up in the score window, and we can actually ch start changing our settings so that we can see it in the piano voicing and different kinds of voicings. But very quickly, you can see that the school window has been redesigned as well to reflect everything that's going on in every other window in Cubase, which is nice. So now you don't need to have, I guess, a uh, different learning curve for the actual school window itself. It's all there. And you've got these nice little short um, and quick uh, editing inspection or inspector windows. Okay, so we can now say that's track one, but now we can go to Hellion Sonic and then come down to track versions and go, right, let's have a new version of of Hellion Sonic. Um, so this is our piano part. So now we can cross back if we wanted to, we can cross back to the first track version there and say project chord track um, chords to MIDI. And now we can switch in between these two versions. So you can see how easy it is without playing a note on the piano really to come up with different types of, uh, of chords. If we wanted to, we could do exactly the same for Groove Agent. So we can create a new version here. Um, and then we can open Groove Agent up and we can find another groove. So we can put that in there. So 